Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so uh, let us continue with our uh, discussion about Mobius transformations. So, you see yesterday I was trying to tell you uh, or rather in the last lecture I was trying to tell you that uh, 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 your, your Mobius transformation um, z going to a z plus b by c z plus d. Uh, with the condition AD minus BC equal to one um, uh, uh, is uh, uh, called parabolic. Parabolic. Um, if uh, A plus B, A plus D, the whole squared, which is actually trace squared of the matrix ABCD, uh, is uh, so, the trace squared is equal to 4. Okay. So, this matrix A B C D uh, is a representative of this Mobius transformation in SL2. Okay. Of course, the other representative is minus A minus B minus C minus T. All right. And uh, if you take the trace, it will uh, the trace squared it will be uh, the condition that it is 4 is uh, it will give you the condition that it is parabolic. In fact, um, um, so, in fact, I what I proved yesterday, uh, I mean, in the last lecture, was it's parabolic if and only if this is equal to four, uh, if and only if uh, it is conjugate to a, a translation. Okay, so this is what I uh, proved yesterday. All right. So, uh, in particular, uh, and of course, uh, let me recall. Uh, uh, um, um, so maybe I should uh, maybe I should modify this. Um, I should not say it's called parabolic. Uh, uh, is parabolic. Uh, is parabolic if and only if this condition holds. Um, and of course, um, parabolic uh, uh, means. Uh, uh, only one fixed point in C union infinity. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, a Mobius transformation, um, you know, if it's not the identity, okay. If it is the identity, it will fix every point, right? If it is not the identity, it can, it will have at least one fixed point, and um, maximum it can have two fixed points. Right, and the case when it has only one fixed point is the case which is called parabolic. All right, and uh, uh, the point I wanted to say is that uh, this parabolicity condition uh, translates to a condition on the trace squared. And that trace squared has to be four. All right, so uh, you can see that uh, 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 the way this is going, the classification of uh, Mobius transformations is being done uh, in in two ways uh, by thinking along two directions one is by looking at the number of fixed points the num the other thing is by looking at trace squared okay so let me define let me look at uh, the other cases let me look at the other cases right so suppose suppose uh, 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 a, a mobius transformation Uh, uh, is uh, uh, non trivial okay so it's not the identity transformation and uh, has two fixed points okay so the case when it is one fixed point is called parabolic the case when 
so what is left out is the case when there are two fixed points okay. So this is a non parabolic case okay. Now what does uh, how do we classify uh, Mobius transformations which have two fixed points okay. So the key to this is again looking at the values of trace squared okay. So uh, uh, suppose the the Mobius transformation um, the Mobius transformation is uh, um, is given by z going to uh, a z plus b by c z plus d as usual with a d minus b c equal to 1 okay. So uh, again the point is to look at uh, the values of trace squared of the representing matrix in SL2 alright. So you see uh, uh, we we say we say it is uh, a loxodromic okay if the trace squared a b c d which is uh, uh, a plus d the whole square okay does uh, it does not be so this is a complex number mind you a b c d are complex numbers all right and in general when I calculate a plus d the whole square I will get a complex number what I want it to be I want it to be a complex number which is not a real number lying from 0 to 4 okay. So this belongs to uh, the set of all z in C uh, such that uh, z uh, 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 so I should say uh, z is z is uh, uh, not not a real number uh, uh, in uh, with 0 less than or equal to z less than or equal to 4. So this is the condition alright, so uh, so you know if I if I try to draw a diagram uh, I have the whole complex plane okay and then I have this line segment here from 0 to 4 I have this line segment alright. If so this is the line segment here okay and uh, if your trace if you calculate trace squared and does not that that value does not lie on this line segment okay that is it lies outside the complement of this line segment okay then it is called loxodromic it is called loxodromic all right. Notice that if trace squared so what is left out is the case when trace squared uh, is real and lies between 0 to 4 okay that is what is left out. So that uh, gives you two other cases so uh, so let me write this down uh, it is called uh, 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 hyperbo so let me first say uh, elliptic if trace squared which is uh, uh, a plus d the whole squared is real okay and uh, it lies between 0 uh, uh, and is strictly less than 4 okay. Of course uh, you know uh, trace squared equal to 4 is parabolic okay. So uh, this point uh, this point is parabolic okay. So uh, I am I am I am looking at here I am looking at values of trace squared which is a plus d the whole square okay. So when it is 4 it is parabolic if it is from 0 to 4 but not equal to 4 then it is called elliptic alright and of course uh, if it is real and its value is greater than 4 
okay then it is of course loxodromic but it is given a special uh, it is given a special name it is called hyperbolic okay. So, uh, hyperbolic if trace squared a b c d which is a plus d the whole squared is real and uh, a plus d the whole squared is greater than 4 okay. So, you see this uh, uh, this region it is elliptic not inclusive of the point 4 but everything from 0 up to something less than 4 okay up to all values less than 4 it is elliptic okay and then from beyond 4 onwards uh, so from here onwards so it is elliptic I mean it is hyperbolic okay. So, uh, this is the uh, these are the definitions okay and uh, you can see that uh, uh, all these definitions are uh, I mean the, the, the definitions are mutually exclusive except for the fact that a hyperbolic transformation is a very special type of loxodromic transformation okay and uh, so you have elliptic. So, if trace squared is real okay then uh, trace squared uh, uh, has to lie if it lies between 0 and 4 okay then it is uh, elliptic if it is equal to 4 it is parabolic if it is greater than 4 it is hyperbolic and any other value uh, if, if it takes then it is loxodromic okay. So, this these are the uh, these are the important definitions okay. So, the uh, the point is that the um, the these definitions come from uh, looking at uh, this quantity namely the trace squared of a matrix representative of your Mobius transformation in SL2 okay. So, so the uh, what you must understand is that th this 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 quantity the trace squared seems to do uh, the job of you know trying to classify them all right. So, let us study in detail uh, what these cases are okay. So, um, well I have already told you uh, what parabolic transformations are they are the ones which have only one fixed point and they are essentially translations okay. But you know Mobius a general Mobius transformation ca consists of various things I mean uh, you can break it down into translations, rotations and scalings okay. Uh, and of course, you can also uh, break it down into inversions okay. So, you can factor it out right. So, we have covered so the parabolic case corresponds to the uh, translations alright. Uh, the other cases come here okay. So, let us let us try to analyze this. Um, so, so let me let me look at uh, let me look at a Mobius transformation of this type. So, uh, uh, let z going to a z plus b by c z plus d uh, uh, let me call this as a okay. Uh, so, this is a of z okay b a Mobius transformation with two fixed points okay. Let us take a Mobius transformation with two fixed points. Uh, uh, or let me even begin by taking with uh, it, it will have uh, uh, if you assume that this is not the ideal transformation it will have at least one fixed point. So, let me let me first take that case okay. Let this be a Mobius transformation with uh, fixed point uh, z0 okay let us say. So, uh, 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 and assume and assume a of z uh, is not a is a of z is not the is not the identity transformation okay. So, uh, or rather let me say a is not trivial a is not trivial means a is not the identity transformation right. So, it has at least one fixed point uh, and it could have two fixed points. Now, you see uh, the the first thing I want to claim is that 
if z not uh, is uh, infinity okay then c has to be zero okay so let me write that down if z not is equal to infinity then uh, 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 i claim that c is equal to zero okay why is that true because because if c is not equal to 0 okay then i can make the denominator vanish by putting z equal to minus d by c okay okay and if i put z equal to minus d by c the denominator vanishes therefore uh, this quantity will become infinity okay so that is how the uh, the point at infinity uh, is also included in in the with along with the operations on, on the complex numbers okay if you remember any finite complex number divided by 0 is taken as infinity all right so if i put z equal to minus d by c okay then minus d by c is a finite complex number okay it's not infinity and it goes to infinity okay so this goes to uh, this goes to infinity okay now but you know all your mobius transformations are bijective and bi holomorphic maps of the extended complex plane onto itself c union infinity onto itself therefore if minus d by c a finite complex number goes to infinity then infinity is not a fixed point okay because of injectivity all right so uh, c has to be zero so what it means is that uh, the the um, uh, uh, the matrix the matrix form the matrix then becomes uh, you know a b 0 d okay and in fact uh, uh, um, these are precisely the Mobius transformations which are automorphisms of the complex plane okay those though what are the Mobius transformations which are uh, automorphisms of the complex plane they are all those Mobius transformations which keep the point at infinity fixed and for keeping the point at infinity fixed this is the upper triangular matrix form that you will get okay. So this uh, uh, Mobius transformations of this type uh, they form automorphisms the holomorphic automorphisms of C and we used to denote that as P delta 2 comma C okay. So fine so now uh, suppose uh, so you know uh, if, if z0 is infinity then it is already in that form but suppose z0 is not equal to is not the point at infinity okay suppose z0 is not the point at infinity. So uh, here by the way um, uh, uh, okay so I uh, will make that remark later so if, if z0 is not the point at infinity if z0 is not the point at infinity okay then uh, uh, we can find a Mobius transformation B with B of Z0 is equal to infinity. You can do this, you can move Z0 to infinity, okay. You can move Z0 to infinity. For example, you could have taken B of Z to be simply 1 by Z minus Z0. If you take B of Z is equal to 1 by Z minus Z0 then z0 will go to infinity so it is a mobius transformation that will move z0 to infinity okay and you see uh, mind you uh, the the matrix matrix representation is you know uh, 0 1 1 minus z0 okay and if you want a matrix representative in sl2c i want determinant uh, uh, to be uh, um, uh, 1 okay so what you should do is you should you can change sign everywhere so you I will put minus minus here and I will put plus here so this is a this is a matrix representative okay does uh, does that help um, mm, probably um, no it is still minus 1 so maybe I will have to take z0 minus z uh, right I will have to take minus z plus z0 if I take minus z plus z0 uh, then it should work so it is going to be 0 um, 1 uh, minus 1 z 
okay. This is now in SL2 right. So uh, just to keep track of the matrix representation right fine. So uh, the point is why I am doing that is because you know if you want a matrix representative you must make sure that it is a representative in SL2. So you must adjust it uh, so that the determinant is 1 okay uh, alright. So, uh, so if I put z equal to z0 uh, b of z0 is going to be infinity. Now watch uh, if I take uh, b a b inverse okay if I take this b a b inverse if I take this Mobius transformation namely I conjugate a by the Mobius transformation b alright then this Mobius transformation will have infinity as a fixed point will have as a fixed point okay. So you will get that is and that is because you know b a b inverse of infinity okay b takes z0 infinity so b inverse will of infinity will be z0 so I will get b a of z0 okay but z0 is a fixed point of a so a z0 is a is just z0 so this is just b z0 and b z0 is like actually infinity so you see b a b inverse of infinity is infinity moral of the story is if you have a fixed point uh, at z0 I can always conjugate it so that the uh, new transformation after conjugation has fixed point at infinity okay. So, uh, so this means that if I write b a b inverse its matrix of uh, if I write it out okay then uh, the matrix form has to be it should look like this. So you see uh, uh, b uh, a matrix representative so in fact let me write this so b a b inverse is of the form is of the form is it going to uh, uh, let let me use a prime uh, z plus b prime uh, by uh, 0 z plus d prime okay because I already told that whenever uh, the for a Mobius transformation if infinity is a fixed point then this uh, member okay this entry has to vanish so it will look like this okay. Um, now you see uh, so 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 that is this is what this is just z going to a prime by d prime z plus b prime by d prime okay and notice that uh, uh, d but d is not 0 um, because then uh, 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 you know a d minus b c is 1 okay and since c is 0 a d is 1 so d is not 0 mind you alright. So dividing uh, by d here or dividing by d prime here is is allowed okay there is no problem there okay. So now you see uh, that you know if you put further the condition uh, that uh, uh, a has uh, has only one fixed point suppose I put the further condition that a has only one fixed point okay that means a is parabolic okay then I claim a prime is equal to d prime and it is a translation okay if further a is parabolic okay um, then um, uh, in the case um, uh, 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 z not equal to infinity which is here uh, a must be equal to d okay and uh, uh, you know why this is true because uh, you know since as I explained in the last lecture a minus d the whole squared is a plus d the whole squared minus 4 ad alright and uh, uh, well a plus d if it is parabolic a plus d the whole squared is 4 okay and a d a times a d minus b c is uh, is going to be uh, 1 
but c is 0 so a d is 1 okay so this is so you see this is going to be 4 minus 4 so it is going to be 0 so a will be equal to d okay and and so uh, a is a translation uh, it is a translation namely z going to uh, uh, a z plus b by uh, d which is a which is just the same as uh, z plus b by a okay. So actually uh, uh, in this case you can see it uh, you do not have to do any conjugation alright to uh, if if the if the if a is parabolic and infinity is the only fixed point then it is already a translation alright. If in the case so in the case uh, when z0 is not equal to infinity okay then you choose b like this you choose b like this uh, b a b inverse continues to be parabolic with infinity a fixed point inf infinity the fixed point okay because you see the property of a Mobius transformation being parabolic or elliptic or loxodromic or hyperbolic is not going to change when you conjugate it that is because that property is defined by looking at the value of trace squared of this matrix and you know the trace of a matrix is invariant under conjugation that is you take a matrix you pre multiply it by an invertible matrix and post multiply it by its inverse okay the inverse of the pre multiplied matrix then the trace continues to be the same okay. So if I take any of uh, any Mobius transformation with any of these properties and if I conjugate it I will continue to get a Mobius transformation with the same properties okay I if I conjugate a loxodromic transformation I will again get a loxodromic transformation if I conjugate an elliptic transformation I will again get an elliptic, elliptic transformation and so on. So you since I have assumed A is parabolic B A B inverse continues to be parabolic okay and infinity is a fixed point so you are in this case. So so B A B inverse is a translation okay so this gives you uh, the proof of this uh, 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 another proof of the statement that I was giving you in the last lecture that uh, you know uh, uh, for a parabolic transform for a transformation to be parabolic it should be conjugate to a translation okay. So the last time I gave you a different I, I was looking at a different proof because I wanted to show to you that uh, if you try to solve for b so that so that b a b inverse is a translation say even translation by 1 it forces the condition that the trace square should be 4. So uh, so this is another direct way of seeing that right now okay so this is the uh, uh, this is a situation when uh, there is only one fixed point but let us assume that there is another fixed point uh, suppose a is not parabolic. So then it will have another fixed point okay then it has another fixed point uh, say z1 okay. So z1 is another fixed point for A okay. So that means you know we are now in uh, these remaining cases so A has to be either it has to be loxodromic or elliptic or hyperbolic okay and we want to see what uh, uh, what kind of form A has alright. So you see if it has another fixed point say z1 uh, you will see that uh, well um, in either of these cases I can always find a B such that infinity is a fix is the first fixed point okay. So again choose B as before so that b a b inverse has infinity as the first fixed point first fixed point okay that I can do 
and mind you of course if I am in this case I have to choose B to be identity because I do not have to conjugate at all okay I do not have to conjugate if I am in this case if already the first fixed point is infinity I do not have to conjugate I can take B equal to identity if the first fixed point is not infinity then I have to conjugate so that the first fixed point becomes infinity okay. So if I take B A B inverse infinity will be the first fixed point but now the second fixed point is changed to B of Z1 okay the second fixed point fixed point is B of Z1 that is because you see if I calculate B A B inverse of B of Z1 I will get B A of Z1 which is uh, B of Z1 so I will get uh, that this is a fixed point okay that is obvious alright. Now what I am uh, uh, see I have already uh, moved uh, by, by a conjugation I have moved one fixed point to the point at infinity okay and you know what I am going to do uh, you can you can guess this I am trying to uh, uh, the other fixed point is not the point at infinity it is a different fixed point and you know I will again do some uh, do a conjugation move it to 0 okay. So I try to bring uh, A to a form uh, of a Mobius transformation which has two fixed points namely 0 and infinity okay so that is what I am going to do. So uh, for that uh, to make this fixed point uh, uh, to go to 0 I just have to translate by minus of this okay. So uh, let C be let C of Z be just Z minus B of Z1 z minus b of z1 so this is translation by uh, minus b of z1 so what happens is uh, uh, if i take uh, c b a b inverse c inverse okay if i take this mobius transformation all right which is which is uh, incidentally also the same as uh, 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 c b a c b inverse if you want these are the same C B inverse is B inverse C inverse right if I take this Mobius transformation then you will see it is two uh, fixed points are going to be 0 and infinity okay mind you C here C uh, as matrix uh, is uh, you know uh, its translation by minus z by minus b of z1 so it is going to be 1 minus b of z1 0 1 which is already in SL2 this is a translation by minus b of z1 okay and uh, what is C inverse the inverse of a translation is just translation by the negative of the vector that you originally translated with so C inverse uh, uh, as a matrix is just going to be 1 plus b of z1 uh, 0 1 this is what c inverse is going to be okay the inverse of a translation is just another translation right. So if I take this then I will get 2 fixed set points 0 at infinity okay so uh, so you see uh, cb uh, a cb inverse has the form z going to lambda z okay if infinity you see if infinity is a fixed point already c is 0 okay and it is uh, and it becomes uh, the, uh, the uh, your uh, uh, Mobius transformation becomes uh, a by d times z plus b by d z going to a by d uh, a by d z plus b by d all right that is what this means z going to a by d z plus b by d it comes to this form all right if infinity is a fixed point and now if I say that 0 is also a fixed point this const this constant term cannot come because 0 has to go to 0 that means b has to be 0 okay and if b is 0 then it is just going to be uh, z into some complex number okay and that complex number uh, uh, you can uh, I'm, one can I am calling it as lambda okay. So uh, the moral of the story is you take a Mobius transformation that is not parabolic 
then you can always do a conjugation and bring it to this form okay. Now the question is you can you can guess what I am trying to get at I am trying to see what properties of lambda will make it you know uh, uh, loxotromic or elliptic or hyperbolic that is the point okay and it, it turns out that there are nice prop uh, there are very simple conditions on lambda uh, that can tell you whether this is you know one of those types. So let us look at those uh, situations so um, yeah so uh, so you know uh, uh, the, 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 the matrix representative of uh, uh, z going to lambda z is well um, you know it will be square root lambda um, 0 0 1 by square root lambda okay. See if I write lambda z just as a matrix I will simply get lambda 0 0 1 if I write lambda if I write z going to a z plus b by c z plus d as a matrix a b c d then z going to lambda z the matrix if I write as a matrix it will be just uh, lambda 0 0 1 okay but the determinant of that matrix is lambda okay it is not an SL2 C representative because I am look I am only looking at SL2 C representatives for my calculations especially when I am when I do this trace business okay. So the uh, to make it an element of SL2 C I take a representative like this of course I can also put minus I can take minus root lambda minus 1 by root lambda and mind you root lambda is 1 square root of lambda there are 2 in general there are 2 square roots of lambda and uh, uh, I take any 1 square root and use the same square root here in both cases alright and mind you uh, note that lambda is not 0 it is not 1 because you know if lambda is 0 then that is not a Mobius transformation it is just the 0 map okay it is not a Mobius transformation and if lambda is 1 then this is identity if C B A C B inverse is identity uh, so I think the inverse has been wrongly put it should be put outside okay if you conjugate a matrix and you get identity then that matrix itself has to be identity okay because you can unconjugate it and on the right side because you have identity it will continue to be identity okay. So this A not being the identity will tell you that lambda is not equal to 1 okay A not equal to identity implies lambda is not equal to 1. So you see the lambda values lambda equal to 0 and 1 are forbidden okay lambda can only have values other than 0 and 1 alright. Now let us uh, uh, so you see when I gave this definition of uh, uh, so I have rubbed it uh, the loxodromic uh, condition so let me write it here let me rewrite it here loxodromic if trace squared a b c d which is a plus d the whole square is in c is a complex number not uh, a real number in this interval. So this see I am considering this as a uh, subset of real numbers okay. So if it is if the trace squared does not take a value on this segment okay then that is my definition of loxodromic alright. Um, of course uh, trace squared is not 4 because uh, there are 2 fixed points and it is uh, not parabolic alright. So so the in all these uh, so let us look at these 2 cases you see in these 2 cases you see uh, the trace squared is real okay it and the loxodromic case the loxodromic case with which uh, which is not hyperbolic okay because hyperbolic also implies loxodromic the loxodromic non hyperbolic case is the case when your trace is uh, uh, that is a condition when the trace does not lie in the segment. So what I am going to do is I am going to first look at the condition that uh, 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 trace squared is real okay. So you see um, uh, trace squared A okay uh, is real if and only if you know uh, trace square a is the same as trace square of this okay 
tray squared of uh, C B A C B inverse is real ok. But C B A C B inverse uh, the matrix is this all right and uh, what is the trace it is root lambda plus 1 by root lambda that is the trace and this trace squared will be root lambda plus 1 by root lambda the whole square. So, uh, uh, that is root lambda plus 1 by root lambda the whole square is real ok this is what you will get I mean this is the condition you will put if you want to study something that is elliptic or hyperbolic right. So, but what is this uh, well this is just uh, if I expand it is lambda plus 1 by lambda plus 2 this is real ok. So, well um, let us investigate this situation. So, let me uh, uh, let me rub this off. So, I will keep I will keep this part uh, I will keep this part as it is all right and I will continue here because I, I would like to you to keep this definition in mind. So, you see uh, uh, so of course, lambda plus 1 by lambda plus 2 is real if and only if lambda plus 1 by lambda is real ok. So, that is lambda plus 1 by lambda is real all right and uh, what is the condition uh, this uh, uh, this happens if lambda plus 1 by lambda is equal to lambda bar plus 1 by lambda bar you know a complex number is real if and only if it is equal to its conjugate and then I can collect terms I will get lambda minus lambda bar is equal to 1 by lambda bar minus 1 by lambda which is again lambda minus lambda bar by uh, lambda lambda bar and you know lambda lambda bar is just mod lambda the whole squared. If I cross multiply I will get lambda minus lambda bar into uh, mod lambda the whole squared minus 1 is equal to 0 I will get this condition ok if I collect terms lambda lambda bar is mod lambda the whole squared. So, uh, when will uh, tray square a plus d be real? Tray square a plus d will be real uh, I mean tray square of a uh, which is a plus d the whole square will be real if and only if uh, this transformation that I have got gotten after conjugation which is uh, which is essentially z going to lambda z the lambda satisfies this property either uh, lambda is equal to lambda bar ok which means lambda is real or mod lambda is 1 ok. So, let me write that down ok. So, you get these uh, con the you get these two conditions on lambda ok. Let us investigate these conditions suppose mod lambda is 1 ok. We will show that uh, mod lambda is 1 is the case when uh, it is elliptic ok. Uh, why is that true well you see um, um, so you know uh, lambda you write lambda as you know uh, mod lambda e power i argument of lambda ok and uh, well uh, 0 is less than argument of lambda is less than 2 pi ok. So, you have uh, the argument should vary over uh, an interval of length 2 pi all right and uh, of course, uh, I, I exclude 2 pi and I include 0 ok. Now, you see uh, uh, notice that argument lambda equal to 0 is not allowed because you know if argument lambda is equal to 0 all right then I will get lambda equal to mod lambda. So, I will get lambda equal to 1 ok, but lambda equal to 1 is not allowed ok. So, argument lambda is equal to 0 implies lambda equal to 1. So, you see uh, 0 should be strictly less than argument of lambda strictly less than 2 pi ok. So, what happens uh, 
So, let me write this as uh, 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 so lambda is e power i theta okay, where theta is argument of lambda. So, I am in this case okay, and look at uh, look at that quantity uh, trace squared a is just e power uh, uh, i theta plus 1 by e power i theta plus 2 okay. So, it is going to be this is cos by d mo of this formula this is you know this is cos theta plus i sin theta this is cos theta minus i sin theta. So, I will get 2 I uh, will get uh, 2 cos theta um, uh, uh, minus 2 uh, plus 2 alright and you see uh, and you see this uh, uh, this quantity you know cos theta is bounded by 1 alright. So, uh, so the first thing I need to say so I just want to say that this is in any case this is less than or equal to 4 okay this is less than or equal to 4 and mind you um, um, So, I want to make the statement that uh, uh, this quantity is going to lie between 0 and 4 it cannot be equal to 4. So, you see if this is equal to 4 okay then you know cos theta has to be uh, 1 okay but cos theta will not assume the value 1 okay. So, uh, in fact less strictly less than 4 okay and I claim that this quantity is actually positive is, is, is greater than or equal to 0 this quantity is greater than or equal to 0 because uh, you know uh, um, why is that so that is because uh, I think that is also quite obvious. Um, I mean uh, you know cos theta uh, at the minimum can become minus 1 and in that case I will get 0 cos theta is always greater than minus 1 greater than or equal to minus 1 and I am adding 2 I am multiplying it by 2. So, 2 cos theta is greater than or equal to minus 2 and if I add 2 it is always greater than or equal to 0. So, so this implies that you know 0 less than or equal to trace squared a strictly less than 4 and that will tell you that a is elliptic. that is the that is the condition and mind you what it will actually tell you is that this is elliptic, but then I told you by uh, after conjugation the ellipticity does not change. So, the original transformation a that you started with is also elliptic. So, the moral of the story is you take a, a non parabolic transformation you conjugate it so that it becomes z equal to lambda z uh, z going uh, so it becomes z go, uh, going to lambda z and if mod lambda is 1 then it will be elliptic okay and the converse also holds if this is elliptic then mod lambda has to be 1 okay. So, how does one see that so let me write that down um, conversely if a is elliptic then mod lambda is 1 okay. If a is elliptic I claim mod lambda is 1 why because you see um, because of the following reason um, uh, for a elliptic means you see 0 less than or equal to lambda plus 1 by lambda plus 2 less than or less strictly less than 4 all right that is what it means. It means uh, this is real uh, lambda plus 1 by lambda is real ok. So, if it is elliptic what is the definition for elliptic a plus d the whole square is real all right and a plus d the whole square turns out to be this this is real. So, lambda plus 1 by lambda is real and its value 
lies uh, between 0 and 4 0 included 4 excluded this is the condition for it being elliptic okay. Now from this uh, um, you can conclude that uh, mod lambda is 1 okay and uh, um, how does one uh, show that I think it is quite obvious. Um, so you know uh, what will happen uh, uh, lambda plus 1 by lambda real would mean that you know uh, either lambda is equal to lambda bar or mod lambda is 1. Okay. Of course, we are trying to prove mod lambda is 1. So, we what we will have to do is you have to ex exclude the case when lambda is real. Suppose uh, lambda is real, so this is the case you have to study. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. So we 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 will show it is uh, it, it cannot happen. We will show it cannot happen. Why? Because you see, uh, you take the function f of x is equal to x plus one by x plus two. Okay, take this function then of course x not equal to 0 then you will see that his derivative is you know 1 minus 1 by x squared okay and therefore critical points or turning points of the graph of the function are going to be uh, r x equal to plus or minus 1 I have to equate this to 0 all right and the second derivative of the function is going to be 2 by x cube the second derivative at plus 1 is positive so at plus 1 I have a minimum so f of plus 1 is minimum for x positive okay and uh, the uh, um, f of if I take the second derivative at minus 1 okay then I will get a negative value so I will get f of minus 1 is maximum for x negative okay and what are the values so you see so x positive implies f of x is always greater than f of 1 greater than or equal to f of 1 okay and f of 1 is 4. Okay, and uh, so x positive x not equal to one will imply f of x greater than four. Okay, and x negative will imply f of x is less than or equal to f of minus one. Okay, which is zero. So x negative x not equal to minus 1 will imply that f of x is strictly less than 0 okay. So this is a very simple calculus computation but it is very helpful to us. So you see if la now you see if lambda is, is real okay uh, then there are two cases um, lambda can be either positive or negative all right all right and uh, well my situation is that uh, 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 so what is given here is that f lies between 0 and 4 okay. So if I instead of x if I plug in lambda if I take f of lambda then f of lambda is either greater than 4 or it is less than 0 if lambda is real what is the upshot of this if x is real the expression x plus 1 by x plus 2 is either greater than 4 or it is less than 0 okay provided x is not allowed to take the values plus or minus 1 all right. So that will give you a contradiction to this case 
that so lambda cannot be real so lambda cannot be real and lambda cannot be real the other case will be that lambda has to be 1 mod lambda has to be 1 okay. So what we get is that the transformation is elliptic okay if and only if after conjugation to make it into the form z going to lambda z mod, mod lambda is equal to 1. So mod lambda equal to 1 is a condition for it to be elliptic alright. Incidentally uh, there is the other case when lambda itself is real okay that also has been taken care of here if you watch carefully okay. So uh, let me put this in a box okay I will put this in a box. I mean this is a this is a rather simple computation but it is very helpful. So you see uh, let me go back here and look at uh, let me look at the other cases. So uh, uh, suppose uh, A is not elliptic. suppose a is not elliptic uh, but you see lambda but tray squared a is real alright. Suppose a is not elliptic and suppose tray squared a is real. So then mod lambda is not equal to 1 because a is not elliptic because we have proved just now that mod lambda being 1 is exactly the case when a is elliptic. So mod lambda not equal to 1 will imply that lambda is real okay you will get the case that lambda is real alright. Now you see uh, if lambda is real okay you look at uh, uh, you look at this uh, the situation okay uh, um, um, so I have to say something. Um, so there are two cases uh, either uh, uh, lambda is positive or lambda is negative okay. If lambda is positive alright then you know tray squared A is just lambda plus 1 by lambda plus 2 that is greater than 4 here if x is greater than 0 and x is not equal to 1 then x plus 1 by x plus 2 is greater than 4 okay. So tray square a becomes greater than 4 and that is the condition for a to be hyperbolic okay which means a is hyperbolic okay. Conversely if a is hyperbolic alright then I claim uh, that the condition is lambda is uh, greater than 0 okay okay conversely conversely a hyperbolic implies lambda greater than 0 okay you, you get that. So and why is that true because you see if a is hyperbolic alright then uh, the condition is uh, tray squared is real okay and tray squared is real will mean either lambda is r mod lambda is 1 but a is hyperbolic and so mod lambda cannot be 1 because then if mod lambda is 1 it a is elliptic alright. So lambda has to be real and if lambda has to be real and you have this condition hyperbolicity condition that lambda plus 1 by lambda plus 2 is greater than 4 then lambda has to be positive because if lambda is negative lambda plus 1 by lambda uh, plus 2 is negative okay. So the, hype, the, the condition that A is hyperbolic is controlled by this lambda being real and positive okay. So z going to lambda z should have the property that lambda is real positive that is the condition for A to be hyperbolic okay so we get that. So I, I have this the other case lambda less than 0 
lambda is negative we have seen that uh, uh, we have seen here that uh, lambda plus 1 by lambda plus 2 is less, less than 0 and therefore you are in the loxodromic case okay. So if lambda is less than 0 uh, uh, trace squared A is negative so A is loxodromic. So the upshot of this whole discussion is the following okay uh, uh, lambda uh, mod lambda equal to 1 if and only if A is elliptic okay uh, lambda I real lambda positive if and only if A is hyperbolic okay and mod lambda not equal to 1 if and only if A is loxodromic okay. So these uh, these three simple conditions will allow you to distinguish between elliptic hyperbolic and loxodromic uh, transformations and uh, somehow uh, uh, we have arrived at these conditions by start looking at the trace square okay which was originally used to define these things alright. So we will continue in the next lecture.